Before we talk about Pathfinder, I feel an obligation to give mention to the game that brought it to life. This is Dungeons and Dragons, or D&D. This is a game that revolutionized the role-playing game genre and is a globally known brand name. It was created in 1974 by the company TSR and is still being produced to this day by Wizards of the Coast. Pathfinder was a game that came out in 2008 trying to continue on the 3.5 edition of D&D. It was produced by Paizo Publishing and is a big competitor of D&D. It has since then become very popular in the role-playing game genre. In a recent poll done on Roll20, there were over 15,000 players registered playing online as compared to the 45,000 people playing D&D, both of these dwarfing their closer competitors. What I hope to do today is introduce you to some of the concepts behind what makes Pathfinder so popular, as well as some of the material components you need to enjoy the game. All right, so here's what we have in an average uh, game session, is what we call them. You'll meet up with your friends, uh, and you will play in what we call a campaign. These are settings that are created by the DM or Dungeon Master. But... Everyone's going to have what we uh, call our character sheets. And on these, you will see all of the stats that compromise the representation of your character's ability. You have what are known as the base stats, like strength and constitution, that would represent your abilities to move heavy objects and be resistant to poison. A fun thought about this game is that the average adventurer is said to be able to compete in the Olympics. That being said, 10 is considered the base stat for everything, and you can increase this slowly as you level up. Getting something like a 20 dexterity would allow you to easily survive a 40 foot plummet down the side of a cliff by skillfully slowing your fall. There is also the skills section that makes up for another large part of who you are on paper. By this I mean if you have high enough ranks into a skill like perception, you can hear a pin drop from several feet away. Without going into too many more details, there are several other features on these sheets that allow you to represent the uniqueness of your character by displaying what your priorities are. This again is known as a paper and pencil type of game, meaning that the cost to play can be pretty minimal. If you are adventurous enough to purchase your own materials though, most people will ask that you bring your own dice, which can be very unique, a figurine, which can generally be pewter or plastic, and your character sheet. Normally you'll meet with other players, and most of them will already have the components, such as books, needed to play the game. Your filled out character sheet will be very important when the DM calls upon you to react to a given situation. He will then ask you to roll to determine whether or not you're able to actually carry out that decision. To give you an idea of what a DM is in the game, they are basically the god of that world. They are able to freely create and destroy matter to further the plot. It is their job to paint a picture for you verbally so you can see the landscape in your mind. To give you a final taste of gameplay, I wanted to run through a quick demonstration. I decided to go with a horror plot to make sure that you could have a level of immersion in it as well. So let's go ahead and make sure our players are ready. Ready. I'm ready. Well then, let's begin. During your travels to what you've heard to be a decrepit men, you try and recall why you were so eager to assist the troubled widow at the inn. Before you know it, time slips away, and dusk is rapidly encroaching upon the daylight. The night is relatively calm, with only a small amount of lingering light to guide your way. Just as you are becoming lost in thought, the sounds of swamp light reel you back into reality. You stumbled upon the modest graveyard in the shady swamp that marked the entrance to the location. Beyond the graveyard, you see a wrought iron gate with hinges on one side and a lock on the other that connects to a stone fence that appears to encompass the man. You notice the gate is unlocked and its rusty hinges screech when you open it. There's a silence that sweeps over the area giving you an uneasiness you are unable to shake. As you approach you are choked by the stench in the air. The smell of rotting meat surrounds the area like a fog. You see oil lamps hanging from the portico of the ceiling by the chains, flanking a set of oaken doors. You walk towards the door and step up onto a seemingly rotted wooden porch. As you approach, you notice the doors 
begin to grow and open by themselves. You think back to the reason you were asked to approach this forsaken place and wonder, is the reward worth whatever this den of evil has in store for you? Now that we are past that, all in all, this game emboldens the imagination. The mind is a powerful tool. With games like these, they allow you to fully utilize that through a guided adventure. The big message here is that Pathfinder is a game that must be experienced to properly enjoy. I hope you've enjoyed this documentary of Pathfinder and the overview of the game as a whole. We've gone over some of the basic materials you need to play, as well as an average session in the game. If you're ever interested in trying it out, I highly recommend it. Thank you and take it easy.